there's several topics I want to go through. Primarily, there's going to be two. But I want to explain a little bit as to what is astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is a carotenoid found primarily in algae, an algae species called Hematococcus pluvialis. <clears throat> that algae species has been known for quite a while, um, and it's, it's been researched extensively in most uh, universities that are familiar with uh, algae growth and, and, um, and uh, propagation of those algae cells. What I'm going to talk about is research that's been going on really since about 2010, and it's pretty astounding research. The paper that I've written deals with astaxanthin's effects on, on cells, not only normal cells, but also cancer cells, and how it actually stops the, the growth of most tumor cells that are expressing what's called PD-L1 ligands. And with that, there's two primary questions that always gets asked. What causes cancer? <clears throat> And how do you reduce your cancer risk as a prophylactic or as a preventative? I'm going to deal with both of those in this, in this paper. The normal cell, as you can see, typically has a pH of about 7.35. Its electric action potential or its voltage across its cell membrane is typically about minus 70 millivolts. That's for a normal cell. And that's the energy that drives a lot of the things that happen in the, in the cellular structure. There's normal protein expression that you can see that um, these, these uh, expressed proteins, some are primarily on the surface with a small amount down inside the intracellular part. Some are communicating with other cells, but this is pretty much a normal cell. Two things to keep in mind. Normal cells have very low PDL1 expression, which means that the PDL1 ligand or hair like appendage that sticks up out of the cell membrane, there's very few of those on a normal cell. The other part of the cell is that the metabolism of a normal cell is aerobic, which means with oxygen. It must have oxygen to carry on its metabolic processes. In a healthy normal cell, you can see this minus 70 millivolt charge, which means that there's um, more negative charges on the inside than on the outside. Another interesting thing that points out is look at the sodium levels on the outside of the cell compared to the inside. Potassium is primarily on the inside sodiums on the outside. These leak channel proteins allow, based on voltage, some of them are voltage gates, allow sodium and potassium to pass across depending on the action potential of the, of the, the uh, normal cell. What causes cancer to form? This is absolutely extraordinary. What we found was that if you took normal cells and you did two things, you deprived that cell of oxygen and you created a hypoxia state of that cell, and you increased the level of sodium ions, a normal cell changes its metabolism from aerobic to anaerobic. All anaerobic cells in the human body are cancerous. We noticed that sodium ions would flow freely in. There's a much higher concentration of sodium ions within a cancer cell than in a normal cell. This had a tendency to reduce the voltage from minus 70 millivolts as the voltage drop across a normal cell to somewhere between minus 18 to plus 33 millivolts, causing the aerobic cell to become an anaerobic cell. The aggressiveness of the cancer seem to correlate quite well with that voltage change across it, with plus 33 being extremely aggressive cancer forms. Why does sodium affect the cells? High sodium levels cause action potential changes across the cell membrane. 
That's very important in understanding the difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell. Sodium also, even though it has a neutral pH, has a tendency to buffer pHs in cells. For example, a normal cell has a, uh, an operating pH 7.35, maybe 7.4. But as the salt level increases, salt has a tendency to buffer or bring down that alkaline pH down to about 7 and as low as 6.8. At that point, a normal aerobic cell is stressed and its metabolism has a much higher probability of changing to that of an anaerobic cell. The other thing that sodium does is as it accumulates inside the tumor cell, it attracts and retains water. That water causes cell growth, or cell volume change, and that is uh, adding to, to tumor growth. The other more important thing we found was that as a sodium level increases, the ability to transfer oxygen from the red blood cell through the interstitial water between the cells because of the high sodium content of that interstitial water. To get that oxygen to move through that interstitial water into the cell itself to be used is dramatically reduced. Let me give you an example. Fresh water has a oxygen solubility of about 14 parts per million. Salt water has a oxygen solubility of four. So the saltier that water is between the red blood corpuscle <clears throat> or the capillary and the cell membrane, the less oxygen you can actually get to the cell. That is a precursor for having that cell recognize that it's stressed and begin to go from an aerobic oxygen required cell to an anaerobic an oxygen deficient cell. That is what we find. Once the cell begins to go anaerobic and upon attack by a T cell, which is in our immune system, we find that that cell immediately begins to express what's called PDL1, PDL2, and there's, there's a, a few other ligands there also. And as an example, a normal cell may contain uh, 10 to 100 order of magnitude PDL1 ligands sticking up off of the cell membrane. In cancer cells, we find PDL1 levels in the range of 10,000 to 100,000 PDL1 ligands sticking up out of the cell membrane. PDL1 is crucial. I'm, I'm going to get into that discussion here in a little bit. As you can see on the chart now, these are the types of cancers that have been identified that are what's referred to as PDL1 expressed cancers. The higher the PDL1 positive indication, the more aggressive the cancer and the more terminal it can become. There's some immunotherapy techniques right now that are addressing this um, where they're actually attacking the PD1 on the T cell that actually binds to the PDL1, the L1. But these are target areas that need to be further addressed. It turns out that astaxanthin, because of its chemical structure, has a real tendency to bind to that PDL1 and stop its in inhibition of the T cell in our immune system. I know that sounds complicated, but as you can see here, this is the molecule of astaxanthin. Looks like a dumbbell. You've got a, a, a large ball here and a large ball here. But the important parts are this carbon is double bonded to oxygen, this carbon here is double bonded to OH, and it's in a, what's called a trans configuration. So th this is also the same thing, and it's symmetrically um, configured. The, these groups, this OH and this O that hangs off of this side and this side, are extremely reactive. As you can see, when astaxanthin, and the length of this chain is very important also, the rod of the dumbbell. So it also can hold a large number of electrons and it regulates uh, electron distribution across the cell membrane. This is an example of how astaxanthin appears to reside in the membrane. It is the exact length of a phospholipid membrane on most human cells. So it can exist 
with it, one of its heads inside the cell and one head outside the cell. The other advantage is, is if this is a tumor cell, the tumor cell has expressed PDL1 and PDL2. These will turn off your T cells, and your T cells are cells in your body that attack tumor cells. That area of the PDL1 is very reactive and it forms um, a, bon a, a bond to the astaxanthin and astaxanthin blocks that PDL1. It inhibits that protein from signaling to the T cell to shut down. It does the same thing with PDL2. This is the mechanism at which it works. This is a T cell, an, a, uh, an inactivated T cell. This is a tumor cell. This MHC1 ex uh, uh, expresses a peptide at this point. The T cell can move in, recognize that peptide as normal or abnormal. In this case here, it would recognize it as abnormal, being a tumor cell. It also expresses PD-1. If PD-1 attaches to PD-L1 that the tumor cell is now expressing, it totally turns off the T cell. When that happens, the tumor cell is not attacked and lives to fight another day. In blocking the PD-L1 using a PD-L1 blocker, uh, astaxanthin is a natural uh, one of those, you can see the T cell comes down, sniffs for that peptide. The problem is now you have an astaxanthin molecule that selectively attached itself to the PDL1 and blocks this connection. Now the T cell does not get a signal to turn off and becomes highly active and immediately begins to secrete chemicals and enzymes that attack the tumor cell. I know this is a little complex, but I'll do my best here to describe it. This is the astaxanthin molecule. Big head, long chain, big head. This is the reactive site of a PDL1 being expressed from a tumor cell. I've just got the very end of it. As you can see, it has a carboxylic group. It has a double bond O and an OH. This part of the astaxanthin molecule will bind through hydrogen bridging and hydrogen bonding directly to that OH group. This, being one length away, one bond length away, wraps that OH down in underneath. And it sits there and acts as a blocking agent for the PDL1 functional site. The astaxanthin has several um, identified actions against the cell. Because of its extreme charges, it's, uh, it has a, a positive charge on the end, a, a very large electronegative uh, configuration in the center. It can manipulate the, the, the fatty acid and the sterile concentrations within the cell. It can reduce intracellular sodium concentrations because of its charge. It can repel sodium ions or attract um, um, uh, potassium ions or chloride ions. It can remove sialic acid and excessive negative charges from the external surface of cancer cells. Most importantly, it can inhibit PDL1 and PDL2 uh, activation sites and allow the T cell now to link up, identify tumor, the tumor as a foreign body and go in and attack that tumor cell. It can also correct intracellular and extracellular membrane uh, electrical properties. It can change the pH, so that's very important. Most of the times, though, when a cell pH is changed to that of an aerobic cell, the cell normally doesn't survive. It usually will go into what's called cellular apoptosis, and um, in most cases it will be lysed by a T cell or another um, a B cell. 
It also reduces intracellular water accumulation because of uh, the ability to reduce the sodium content inside the tumor cell. If you want to mitigate your risk of cancer with essentially no side effects, these are the things that you need to do immediately. Everyone can do these. It's reduce or eliminate the sodium intake by reducing extra dietary sources of salt. The more salt you take in, the more sodium you put in your system, the lower the solubility is of your interstitial fluid, the less likely it is that you can get oxygen to your normal cells. That's very, very important. Eliminate all sources of cellular hypoxia. That's why smoking is such a problem. Smoking does two things. Not only binds the red blood cells with carbon monoxide, it also inhibits, because of pH changes, that ability to transfer the oxygen from the red blood cell directly into the cellular structure through the capillary. The other most important part is that even with all of those in place, there's still the possibility that cells, daughter cells that are reproduced, may be produced in areas of low oxygen content. So even in spite of all this, we still run a probability of generating cells that can't get enough oxygen because of their location. And therefore, those a percentage of those could be converting into an anaerobic state or into a cancer state. It's very important that you take astaxanthin or a PDL1 blocker. The advantage of astaxanthin is, is that it has no side effects. Um, the PDL1 blockers on, out in the marketplace that are synthetic have some fairly serious uh, side effects. But from a natural point of view, that's that's the material. Beta carotene is another, and uh, there's some other carotenoids. Vitamin A is very important, and vitamin D. And with that, I'll close. Feel free to contact Missing Link at any time, and we can work through most of the problems that you may be experiencing. Thank you for your time. Thank you.